Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another edition of Band America. I'm your host, John Block, and today we have so much to talk about because yesterday I was at a awesome rally in downtown D.C. It was called the Demand Free Speech Rally featuring Milo Yiannopoulos as well as Megan McGinnis and Laura Loomer and a few other great patriots and Today, I'm here to talk to you about censorship, because yesterday when they talked about what's happening, you know, so many people are being banned from so many different places, from Twitter to Facebook to even Pinterest, and it was interesting because lately we have that Project Veritas video and information coming out talking about that, and Pinterest, which the number one person or the number one demographic that uses Pinterest is uh, suburban women who happen to be Christian. So on Pinterest, even the word amen is being banned. These kind of idiotic things are happening on Pinterest and on all these other different platforms where people are being deplatformed because their rhetoric is conservative or their rhetoric doesn't fit the mold of left-wing extremist Antifa supporter, which is essentially the only people that are allowed on these platforms. And it's kind of baffling to me that people are are not they're just blinking an eye about it. You know, there was about 250, 300 people that came to the rally yesterday, myself included, as well as a few other people. And the thing is, we need more people to come out in droves to support free speech. And there's absolutely no reason why more people weren't there and shouldn't have been there, because there were Antifa protesters who are They are professional protesters. These people are ingrained in the protester mentality. They all live in their mom's basements, probably, and they don't work, probably. And like I was talking to one woman who was a code pink protester, you know, the ones that interrupted Justice Kavanaugh's nomination to the United States Supreme Court. I talked to her because I remember her. I recognized her, and I said, why the hell did you go in the Supreme Court or in the United States Senate, and why did you interrupt a Senate hearing? And she told me, because my 16-year-old daughter, she deserves to have the right to abort her baby. And I said, how dare you? You know, and then she started babbling on and on about, oh, well, what about the children in Yemen? And why is the United States supporting bombing uh, people in Yemen? And I said, you know, I said, we don't support terror in any way, shape or form. And what about the 60 million babies that are slaughtered? that have been slaughtered since 1973. What do you have to say about that? And then she says, oh, well, well, what have you done to help the babies? What have you, would you support these kids on welfare? And I tell her, you know what? I'm one of the few people that actually practices what I preach. And I go to abortion clinics and, and pray for women and minister to them. I care about my community. I go out and serve as in any capacity I possibly can, to support people that need our help, be they children, be they homeless families. You know, I try to to do whatever I can as a Christian to help people out. And she said, well, well, I don't want your help. You know, these people, they are so self-righteous that they have the audacity to tell someone like me that I shouldn't have a voice because I am not a specific gender or I am not a woman, so I couldn't talk about abortion. Well, I say, well, what the hell about, what about all the, all the fathers? You know, what about the fathers that have to worry about their children being murdered in the womb without their consent? How is that okay? And people that are willing to help, they should be helping. And it's not the the government's responsibility to take care of people's children. It is their own responsibility, and they should own up to their choices. If they are going to, to have intercourse, they should have the reasons and the the financial stability to support a child. To support a child. And there is no reason to murder a child for one's own horrible decisions. And yes, there are children that are products of rape. There are children that are products of assault and of incest. But is it the child's fault? Should we take out the horrible choices of a few people on an innocent little baby in a womb? I don't 
think so. And that is why I am so active. That is why I care so deeply about the right to human life. Because in our Declaration of Independence, it clearly states we have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Life being the first. And everyone should have that same equal right to life. So, these kind of ideas that I'm speaking about, these are the things that people are assaulting in our everyday lives. And we have these piecemeal conservatives that call themselves conservative that sit around and, and put their finger in the wind, lick their finger, put it in the wind, and see where it's blowing. And that's how they're going to vote the next day. That's how they're going to support whatever the next day. But they don't have real morals. You know, they only support abortion, oh, until a certain point. You know, they only stop abortion to a certain point. They only, they, they think that there should be a pathway to citizenship for, fe for people who have broken the law, entered our country illegally, they think they should be rewarded. You know, people need to stop swaying in the wind and bending around and need to pick a damn side. I am sick and damn tired of these weak, petty little little mongrels who walk around and pretend like they are so high and mighty when people don't stand with their ideals in the face of opportunism they want to get ahead some way however the however they can they will vote however they have to they will say whatever they have to they will do whatever they have to in order to get ahead in their career or what they think will get them ahead in their career but at the end of the day, if you look at people who have actually stood by their morals and stood by their convictions, like, like a Wilberforce or other people, like even, even uh, Buckley, you know, these people, they stood up for their beliefs. They didn't falter. They didn't sway. They didn't put their finger in the wind and see where it's blowing. They stood with their convictions and they stood with them strong. And they didn't give in because they knew they were right. And that's what we have in our president right now. Our president has stood in his convictions from day one. Ever since he was a civilian in the, in the 90s and the 80s, you could see his way of thinking. And you see that then, and you compare it to now, it's identical. Our president is consistent. He is strong. He stands up for his beliefs. He doesn't give in to Antifa terrorists. He doesn't give in to radical socialist Democrats. He gives in to what is right. He doesn't have to sit around and worry about how he should vote on something or how he should, if he should sign this executive order about this or that. You know, he knows what's right, such as his executive order uh, with the Veterans Accountability Act. His, his signing of that, where veterans are allowed to choose their medical providers because the, the VA is completely in, incompetent. They don't, they don't do their jobs, and he has shielded them from this horrible system by letting them go and see their doctors, whoever they choose, because they are incredible people who put their lives on the line for us, and they should get everything first. So, getting back to it, these, these little limp wristed little rhinos, soy boys, that sit around and jump around and say, well, we're offended by everything. Let me tell you something that happened to me just this week. Someone who I'm not going to name for the sake of not wanting to give him any more publicity or any more name recognition, this person, his name rhymes with Bandin, okay? Bandin. This, this, little, this little turd of an individual who should go by the word bandon or nameless. This individual, he is very good friends with a, a local senator, and he claims to be family, but I haven't seen it. But he claims to be family with this local senator who he, he said was his uh, inspiration. I believe the exact word was his, um, was it a role model or mentor. I think the word was mentor. He said, these are great mentors. He had a picture of him and this senator. Mentor. The senator at the time of the photograph, when it was posted, March 2019, this year, the senator was proposing radical gun legislation 
that would rip away guns from people, force background checks on every single gun in the state, and it would uh, force even family members who are inheriting a firearm from an, a grandparent or an elderly person or whoever is, is giving them the firearm, they would have to go through another background check in order to even have that gun. And if they don't do that, then the gun is confisc confiscated. Now this is completely against the Second Amendment in all forms. Shall not be infringed is not something that can be, you know, scrutinized and said, well, it's a vague, vague statement. No, uh, shall not be infringed is pretty damn blunt. So this senator, he, he has this bill. I think it's Senate Bill 8. He proposes it, radical gun grabbing legislation. It goes through. It gets approved. And the governor signs it, right? Because our, our legislature in New Mexico is destroyed. It's a, a disgusting cesspool. I don't even want to talk about it. So this senator, he has this crazy legislation, but he votes against HB 51, the radical abortion bill. So good for him, you know, but this guy still is ripping people's guns away. So I don't support him. I don't. Recently, the, st the same senator, he was arrested on suspicion of drunken, drunken driving, DWI. Right. He, he pleads with the officer. He says, oh, officer, Jesus Christ, why is it that I am being arrested? You know, this is a public official of more than 20 years, senator, who is acting like this in his Mercedes Benz, driving around in his SUV. You know, I used to have a Mercedes Benz, and that was the biggest mistake of my life. I sold the hell out of it because it's just so expensive, and I shouldn't have ever bought it. I was a stupid 18, 19-year-old, whatever. But the thing is that this senator, who has the audacity to drink and drive, then plead with the cops, and then he's probably going to get off easy, this person is the same individual that this, uh, this kid that I'm not even going to talk about, this kid says is his, his mentor. You know, someone that gets a DWI doesn't sound like a mentor to me. And also in the past, uh, this same senator is one that gave out racist Facebook posts. on. He posted racist Facebook posts against Asian Americans on his post on Facebook. And he was called out by the media, Channel 4. But no one, uh, he never gave one apology. He never said he was sorry. He just owned it. He owned this racist statement, and that is something that I find unacceptable. So, I am I'm saying that this guy is not a mentor. This guy is not a role model. This guy is not someone that you should look after as someone that you want to replicate, because this guy is a terrible person, a career politician of more than 20 years in the same Senate seat, and hasn't done a damn thing for the district. So... I say this on Facebook. I, I call it out. Someone else posted this video, this picture, and I reposted it and said, this kid is calling this guy a mentor. Uh, it doesn't sound like it. And in the past, this kid and I, we've had a past of him on Facebook complaining on everyone's profile about how he's so offended because he's gay. He always says, oh, I'm so offended I'm gay. Oh, uh, because I'm gay, I was kicked out of a restaurant. Because I'm gay, I did this. And I told him, stop with the gay card. Okay, we get it. You're gay. Good for you. Why don't you, you uh, earn something from your own merits instead of just complaining all day about how you're gay? No one cares if you're gay. No one cares uh, about, about your sexuality, who, who you sleep with. You know, it's about how you act, and it's about what you believe. And this kid, he believes in, in giving out subsidies to Hollywood movies. This kid, uh, he's a limp on abortion. He sways in the wind on everything. Everything, every single issue I think of the Republican Party, he is the antithesis of that. And he still claims to be a Republican. He's much like, like an Anna Navarro, or whatever her name is, on, on CNN. You know, she's like, oh, I'm a Republican, but she believes in literally nothing that Republicans stand for. Nothing. So, this, this same kid, who previously he tweeted about how people should be locked up if they have DWI, this same kid is calling this guy a mentor and then he has the audacity to defend the guy on social media and then on his little private page that he is so you know he's so protected from the world i have a mutual friend that that is friends with him so he saw this post since i was uh not friends of him he saw this post and he sent it to me in a screenshot 
This screenshot showed the idiotic words that, that he was spewing against me, saying that I was going after him because he was gay, and he can't believe a fellow gay person would ever do this to him, and that I was, uh, that I was going after his family, and, and he's harassing me. And the thing is, I wasn't harassing him at all. I literally just, sh I just put facts on the table. These are inconsistent. This kid is saying, oh, I'm gay, feel bad for me. This is his whole, whole argument, right? That is what I posted about. That is what I said. So uh, then I post about this and I said, this kid, this, this spineless little person is going after me saying that I, I care about, um, that, that I care so much about him, that I'm obsessed with him, and that I, uh, I think, I think he said that I'm harassing him, and if he doesn't, if I don't st stop harassing him, he's going to go to the D.C. police and report me. Well, the poor little baby, I told him, go ahead, have fun with that. You know, you are, a, you are a very sad person, and I'm done with you. You know, this post was telling you, I'm done with you, and you sicken me. So he's like, oh, I'm going to go to the D.C. police and have you arrested. I'm like, okay, good for you. Have fun. You know, I don't, I'm pretty sure the D.C. police have a lot more interesting things to do, like catching drug dealers and uh, prostitution rings, than going after someone for a Facebook post that literally just says the truth. And it's not harassment, because it's the truth, and it's, I'm so sorry, if you get offended by the truth, go for it. I'm so sorry, but that's just how it is. But, you know, it's, there's nothing illegal about speaking the truth, and that is the thing that drives me up the wall with liberals, with rhinos, and with commies like this frap. He is using his privilege or whatever the lack of privilege he has. Oh, I'm I'm a Hispanic or I'm I'm gay, and he uses that as a pelting tool to affirm his weak straw man arguments because he has nothing of substance behind them. And then when someone calls him out on it, he retracts like a little baby, and then continues to say, oh, well, you're, you're offending me because I'm gay, so you're targeting me. No, I'm targeting you because you're a jackass. I'm sorry, a jack wang. I apologize for the language. But, you know, we're targeting him because he's a jerk. The guy is a total jerk. And that is why I'm not, I'm not targeting him. I'm just pointing out facts. And when you are inconsistent, and when you talk smack but are not willing to take the heat... You are the problem, but everyone wants to, to, to complain about it, and if you're a liberal or a rhino, you get off, you get off on it. So, I'm on a 30-day Facebook ban because the idiot reported me saying I harassed him on Facebook. So, I have a 30-day ban. Right now, it's day 28. I am on day 28 waiting to, um, to get off of my, my Facebook ban, and this just happened a couple days ago. You know, these people, if they can't win an argument with facts and with the truth, they will just report you to Facebook and have the little Facebook police come in and say, oh, well, well, he was triggered by it. So it counts as harassment. Let me tell you, no one is safe. You know, I did everything I possibly could to stop the crazy rhinos on my page. I unfriended hundreds of people that are rhinos. I did everything I possibly could to get these people off my page. But at the end of the day, these people will infiltrate. These people will get their way on Facebook, on Twitter, to get you censored just because you speak the truth. And I'm sick and damn tired of it. I'm sick and damn tired of being the person that gets the brunt of everything just because I tell the truth. And you know what? I'm not going to stop. And I'm not going to complain and use my, my, my lack of privilege. Oh, I'm gay. I'm Hispanic. No, I'm not going to use that. Because I have substance behind my arguments. I have substance behind what I believe, my morals, my convictions, my faith. I have truth behind everything I believe. And I'm not going to submit to some little peon who thinks he's some big, bad, DC, uh, big old, you know, uh, he's essentially a swamp rat. He thinks he's, he's some big shot. He's no big shot. He is a little, little baby who uses his little, little privilege or lack of privilege to get ahead. And I will always use just the facts, just the truth, 
and I will never pander based on my sexuality, my heritage, or my skin color, because that is not the way America was founded, and You know, people that have shaped history, they didn't rely on those things to get ahead, like John F. Kennedy and like uh, Martin Luther King Jr. You know, not the, the color of one's skin, but the content of one's character. And that is what I base all my arguments on and all the, the truth on, because I will not be silenced by some little brat. So that is it for this episode of Band America. And I just recommend everyone go on their profile and try to wipe as many rhinos, as many communists, as many of these these insane libbies as you possibly can, because at the end of the day, they will still infiltrate you. They will still get through, but you might as well get as many of them away as possible so you don't go on a Facebook ban like me for 30 days. And I also say, be careful about what you post uh, on you know, I, I tried to post everything publicly. You know, I am a public person. What I say, put it on the record, keep it there forever. I stick with my words. You know, I believe in what I believe. That's just how it is. And you, you can use my words against me all you want because they're out there. They're public. But I recommend if it's going to be something t- talking about the truth, you might as well put it behind closed doors, put it behind a, a, a post where it's just your friends. Because... These Libbies, they will go on there and try to report you for harassment or for something that doesn't, that has nothing to do with community standards. They'll report you, and then you will be in Facebook jail for a week, for 24 hours, for 30 days, or forever. And there is nothing you can do about it. So I've been trying to migrate off of Facebook, off of Twitter, but at the end of the day, those are where, where the most people are. But there's so many other options like MeWe and others that you can go on and start new profiles because we cannot afford to have our voices silenced. This is what happens to America when we don't speak. It declines. And we need to reelect our president. We need to get good, staunch conservatives in Congress and in state legislatures and governorships. And we need to be serious for once about our future as a country. We cannot afford the banning, we cannot afford the censorship, and we will not stand for it. At least I won't. So thank you all so much for watching. I hope everyone has an awesome week, and you all take care. I love you guys. Take care. Bye-bye.